Welcome to Tint Wisdom number 45. Uh, I'm Eric. This is Tint Wisdom. And like I said, this is number 45. And today I'm going to be discussing five topics that came up over the weekend at the Lumar Eastman conference in Tucson, Arizona. So these were five topics that came up during the Sunday breakfast, which I think is the, I mean, it's the part of the meetings that I always enjoy most. So I'm excited to talk about these five topics because when they came up, um, I would have liked to address all of them in Tint Wisdom fashion, but, you know, that didn't, I wasn't going to do that to everybody. Um, let them enjoy their breakfast and, you know, get everybody's feedback. It's one of those scenarios, too, where, like, while I feel the need to answer a question, it really is more valuable for me to listen, and I got that opportunity then, so that's why I kept my mouth shut, because truly I want to listen. I know what I know, and as much as I want to help, um, you know, I also want to learn. And by listening, you know, listening is going to enable learning. So I'm going to go over those five topics today, and I'm just giving everybody a minute to get in here. And, uh, you know, if you haven't shared this video yet, if you share it on your page, if you share it to one of the tint groups, it helps get other people in here. And of course, that sparks questions and conversation, which helps everyone. So go ahead and please share this video and we'll get started. So the topic for today, like I said, these were five topics that were brought up during the Sunday portion of the Eastman Lumar, you know, it's the select pro meeting. It's for Vista and Formula One dealers. And what they do is on Sunday morning, they host a breakfast. It's a two hour breakfast. It's uh, just kind of like a round table. Everybody can, anybody and everybody can join in. It's, you know, they throw around mic so you can just ask a question and then anyone in the audience can go ahead and answer that question. And, you know, it's a part of the meeting. This, this is probably, I think the fourth Formula One Vista meeting I've attended, and it's part of the meeting that I really enjoy the most because I really like to hear from everyone. So, you know, like I said a little earlier on this Tint Wisdom, I get the chance to speak every Tuesday, Thursday, sometimes Wednesdays, and so on, um, on phone calls, on demos, on training, and so on. I'm always speaking, and what I really like about that Sunday morning breakfast is I get an opportunity to listen, to listen to people that maybe don't share on social media, people that maybe I don't know or I, I don't you know speak to on the phone. So I get to meet a bunch of people, hear their knowledge and their wisdom. And uh, you know I, I live for that. I wish it was more than just one time a year. I would go to it weekly if it was weekly, uh, maybe more than once a week if, they, if it was possible. Obviously, that's just... Um, you know, not, not realistic, but I really love it. And that's why I always recommend if you have a dealer meeting that's still coming up, if you by any chance, because most of them have passed, I highly recommend you attend the meetings with any manufacturer, give them a shot because it's not just about the, you know, the products. It's not just about the manufacturer. It's about the other people you're going to meet there, the relationships you can make and the knowledge you can learn just from, you know, people just sharing what works for them. So during that two-hour brunch, or breakfast rather. And what's up, Benny? Thanks for joining. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining. I have the comments up. Or I'm pulling them up right now. So Adam said, invited probably 900 people. Thank you, Adam. I really appreciate that. And uh, we have about 15 people watching now. Thanks, Vinny, for joining. You know, I, I really, these videos, the reason that they're live is obviously so we can get the interaction, so I can get questions and, and give feedback just on the fly. But also one of the reasons was I wanted to create a video that I could post right away, something that I didn't feel had to be edited. And by doing it live, I'm just eliminating the chances that I, because of editing, I'm not going to get to post the video. Because what will happen is, you know, you'll film a video with the best intention, and then you want to make it perfect, you want to edit it, and then it never gets posted. And then you stop filming because you're not posting videos, why would you film? And Doing a live video is my hack to say, I'm going to make a video once, twice, three times a week, and there's not going to be an opportunity to edit it. So that's why these are live. Um, so thank you for sharing because it really does make all the difference. What's up, Ricardo? Thanks for watching. Carrie, the best designer. Carrie's from Iron Duck Designs. She does 99% of the design work you see with Tint Wisdom or with Tint Wiz. And uh, a lot of our social media posts and a lot of things we do for some of our TintWiz users, um, banners and icons and so on and, and Facebook graphics and, 
gift certificates and so on. And she's an amazing graphic designer to work with. So graphic designers are not easy to find. Uh, you, you know, they are actually, I take that back. They're easy to find, but finding a great one is not easy to find. And she's not only talented as a graphic designer, but she's embedded into the window tint community, which makes her just, you know, just a more powerful graphic designer. Because when somebody truly understands how to design the focal points and the angles and the uses of colors and the uses of imagery to relay your message, that is different than somebody who just has graphic ability. And when you pair that up with somebody who understands the window tint industry, now you have somebody who's really dangerous when it comes to graphic design. So that's why we work with her and that's why I can very confidently recommend working with her if you have a window film company because something like a refresh to your graph, to your logos, to your Facebook page, to the logo on your website, um, to your flyers, things like that can cost you a few hundred dollars, uh, maybe closer to a thousand dollars depending. Maybe you do a full brand redesign and it's two thousand dollars. Well, folks, the great part about the window film industry is you can make up that two thousand dollars in one home job, one commercial job, or one marine job, or, or maybe two or three tent jobs, one ceramic pro job. I mean, this is an investment that is small compared to the reward that you can get back from these improvements. So it's a great, it's a great thing that you can, it's a great way to improve your business by just handing it off to an expert that's in the industry that knows what they're doing and isn't going to require your decision making. So the best thing you can do when you find somebody that is competent in a field and you know knows what they're doing and you trust them is hand it over to them, let them do what they want to do. Don't turn it into a compromise between what you think's best and what they think's best because if we're agreeing that they're the expert, then you should be able to trust that some things that maybe you don't agree with might be you don't agree with because you're not an expert in that field. So that can kind of be a trap that's easy to fall into. Don't let yourself fall into it. When you find an expert, trust them, let them do their thing. And Carrie is that expert when it comes to graphic design for the window film industry. Very certainly I can you know say that and the proof's in the pudding. That's why we work with her. And we have a lot of cool projects coming up this year that involve her. So um, I'm going to just take a sip of coffee and we're going to jump into these five topics that came up during the meeting over the weekend. I needed the coffee because my mouth was dry and that's actually the secret to how I speak so fast and consistently is the coffee. So topic number one. Now these were topics that were asked by other window film dealers um, during the breakfast on Sunday at the Eastman Lumar meeting. So these were things that they're running into. And then I, I did get the chance to hear some of the answers that other dealers were providing. And when I remember those, I'll bring them up and try to give credit as it's due. Um, for the stuff I disagree with, I will not give credit to them because I don't want to point anybody out. I just want to, you know, give my opinion. And I always say there's more than one way to cook a delicious steak. So, you, you know, I'm giving you a way that I am certain works. And if somebody else can give you a way that they are certain works even better, then by all means go with that way. But usually, um, you know, a lot of people are kind of passing along information either of what they hear or sometimes what they experience, but it can be challenging to really measure results with some of these topics. So the first one being that. Uh, the first topic is automation, uh, trying to automate your customer inquiries. Okay, so what I'm talking about is when a customer calls you, emails you, sends you a text, taking some part of that and automating it. So another example would be a Yelp inquiry. If a Yelp inquiry comes into your Yelp account, how do you respond to that? Is it a bot that you use? And that was something that was brought up. There's a, um, a couple window film companies that are using like automatic bots that can actually even require, respond to Yelp inquiries. And then, you know, another kind of layer of automation for your inquiries is do you include pricing? How much information do you give them on that response? And how much do you automate? Now, you know, really... I think there is room for automation and there is room for putting your prices out front. Now, there's one, there's really one scenario that stands out to me when that is a good idea. And when that is, is if you are what I consider a boutique shop, so you have one or two um, employees and you know, your interest isn't really growing in size as a company, you just want to 
you know, work at your pace, work with your crew, maintain a high profit margin, and you don't want to do more cars in a day. You don't want to do more, you know, um, cars in a week. You just want to make as much as possible. And if that's the case, and you find yourself three, four, five, six weeks booked out, point to the point where customers are not happy that they have to wait so long, then in that case, when you're getting new inquiries, I absolutely think it could be beneficial for you to automate the response to that because that's going to alleviate time that you're spending answering those inquiries and responding to them. And it's going to kind of weed out the people who aren't your customer. If you have that high of a demand, then you're going to stay booked out and you're just going to save yourself some energy by replying to those inquiries, those emails, those text messages with an automated response. Now, that's to me one very, very little portion of the shops that exist out there. I think the majority of the shops absolutely should not automate that first touch with a customer and they should not include their pricing. And the reason for that, and I, and I really, really feel strongly about that, is because your first touch with a customer, they reach out to you, however they do that, your first response to them, you know, that's your, that's your second impression. Their first impression was however they found your number. But your second impression, the first time you're getting to talk to them or reach out to them, do you want it to be an automated response? Like, is that, is that really what you feel like the, the best way to show your customer right off the bat, that you value them, that you're excited to work with them, that you have the solution to what they're looking for, that you have, you know, they're going to get the attention that they desire if they're a hiring client, maybe, or they have high expectations, an automated response. You know, I just don't feel that would be the best place to save time. There are plenty of places to automate and plenty of ways to save time throughout the sales cycle of a window film installation, but your first touch with your customer is not that one. You also want to be careful of when you respond to that customer, okay, even if you're going to do it manually, I'm not just saying do it manually, but do it basically like you're a robot. Um, you know, what you want to do is you want, don't be a, be be aware of doing what I call like a data dump on them, okay? So think about this. You say, hey, I'm interested in window tinting. And what you hear back is every service that the company does, all the pricing, all the frequently asked questions and everything. Now, to some, to a very small few, they'll, that, they'll be appreciated by it. They'll appreciate that. And they'll find that it's th you're thorough. And if you've built a reputation to where you know, people are wanting to come to you for you, they're going to appreciate that thoroughness and be fine with it. But what's going to happen more times than not is people are going to be overwhelmed with it. They're going to focus on the wrong parts of the e of the message, of the response. So if you send somebody an enormous response, you are taking away your control over pointing them to the important parts of that response. And some parts are sort of more important for you to relay, like your attention to detail and your high quality films and your customer service and your availability. The things that you want to convey to them are in there, but you don't necessarily know how to point it to them. Now, where they're going to go most likely is straight to the price. They're going to read the price and they're going to make a decision. But what they're probably not going to do is then reach back out to you. So, you know, the first thing I want to point out is, you know, you want to start a conversation when you're responding, whether you do it um, with a copy and paste or you type it out each time. Try to be conversational. So what does that mean? <clears throat> conversation means, you know, ask questions. Um, you don't have to just data dump them with everything. You can ask them questions. They can say, how much is it to, to, you know, to tint a sedan? And you can say, oh, great. Uh, congratulations on your new car. And are you looking primarily for heat rejection uh, to, protect, to protect the interior of your vehicle? Or are you just looking for privacy? And see what they say. See where their focus is. And, you know, um, if they say, you know, it's actually not a new car. This is a, uh, I've had this car for years. You say, oh, has it ever been tinted before? Is there any tint on it now? Have you ever, ever had tint? And by asking these questions, you're starting a conversation and that's making them more kind of feel obligated to respond to you. And as, and they're also getting to know you. And it's a feeling of, you know, your genuine interest in making sure that they're a happy customer and that they get what they're looking for. And at that point, they're more likely to trust you and you're more likely to make the sale than just try trying to dump all the information on, on them. And, you know, going back to where this, where I started the automation, the point of the, uh, not automating your first touch, really it's, it's a difficult one to measure because you don't really know how many people didn't call you. You don't know how many clicked off your website without getting a, you getting a chance to capture their information. So let me give you another example real quick. You put your pricing on the website. They click on your website, they read your pricing, they click off your website and continue to shop around, keeping you in mind. 
you don't have your pricing on your website, but you have your phone number and you have a TintWiz lead form on your website so they can submit their information. They call you or you call them. They ask you for the price. You give them the price and you hang up the phone. Cool. The difference in those two, and they continue to call around and get other prices, keeping you in mind, just as they did when you had your price on the website. The difference between those two scenarios is you have their contact information in the second scenario, but you don't know who that customer is in the first scenario. So the difference is you earn yourself the ability to go ahead and follow up with that customer so that you can make sure that, you know, if they shopped around, you can follow up. Hey, did you get your tint on? Is there, you know, any other questions I can answer? And, you know, they might tell you, no, it's a price. It's just the price. And that gives you an opportunity to, you know, explain why your price is what it is or even potentially lower your price and negotiate a price. It gives you an opportunity to address whatever is keeping them between um, getting their tint with you. And, uh, you know, that's a big difference than the first scenario where you're not capturing their information. So capturing their information is important. And that's also why I insist that, you know, hopefully you're using TintWiz. If you're using not using TintWiz, it's, it's the same principle of every single lead you speak to, every single person who emails you, every single text message inquiry you get, every single contact, no matter how little or much information you get, you want to have that information all in one place and you want to have it organized in a way that you can follow up with the customers who don't purchase from you. So you can follow up a day or two later, another couple days or two later, you can follow up through different messages. You know, you don't always have to call, you can send a text. Sometimes people are more free to, to, you know, text you back than to talk, especially if they're at work or they're with somebody else. Phone, phone is not that convenient. Text gets to them anywhere. Um, it's a little more, you get people's attention better than email. Email's kind of more like getting mail in the mail. You can't really control when somebody checks their mail or their email, but you can control when, you know, they see your text because everybody pretty much tech checks their text every couple seconds. So, um, or every couple minutes or hours at least. So you definitely want to be able to follow up with your inquiries. That's going to make the most of them. That's going to be absolutely game changing. If somebody calls, you have to capture their information, even if they're just calling for a price, get their phone number, get their name, put down what type of car they have, the price you quoted them and follow up with them at the end of the day or the next day. And you'll see that out of 10, you might've been converting four and maybe you'll start converting seven. And that could be a 75% increase in growth of your company. That could almost double your company right there. Just even if you are converting four and you convert a fifth, okay, that one is 20% growth over the course of a year. 20% growth, your company would grow just from something as simple as following up with your leads. And it has no expense, no added expense other than just doing it, just the labor of it. So definitely don't let that go to waste. I'm going to move on to the second topic, which is um, that was asked about, which was um, how to hire installers. So how to hire installers, you know, it's First of all, you have to try to hire installers. So that means you have to have ads out at all times of the year, especially the slower parts of the year. Don't just put the ads out in July when you realize how busy you are or in June when you realize how busy you are because guess what? At that point, everybody's busy. So a lot of people are out of work. So you want to have the ads year round, 12 months a year, and you're probably going to get more inquiries during the winter and slower months than you are in the busier season. And that's fine. You have to have money aside to be able to float those employees and have them on board and, you know, have have systems in place so they can you can be as efficient as possible and, you know, turn them into the biggest return for you. And, you know, that's one. So having ads out there 20 uh, 12 months of the year so that you're always hiring and looking out. The next thing is evaluate what you're offering those installers, okay? So you, you know, don't, it's, it's very similar to you attracting a customer. You're marketing yourself to somebody because you want them to depict your company to dedicate their life to, you know, that's how they're going to provide for them and their family. That's what they're going to be doing. The bulk of their week is working for you. So you have to look like an attractive company. So the second thing is evaluate your company, evaluate your ad, your image, what you're offering, what you're paying. If you're going to supply, you know, ladders and drop cloths and uniform and so on, evaluate your, you know, how do you handle days off and so on. Be flexible, you know, put together the most practical, but, you know, thoughtful job presentation and job offer out there. And you're going to increase the odds of hiring quality installers. Certainly it's easier to find 
uh, like drug addicts and people who don't work somewhere else. Uh, you know, that was brought up by somebody who said, you know, it seems like at the meeting, they said, it seems like the people who come to work for me end up being drug addicts. And, you know, of course, those people are going to be the easier ones to find. So if you're not doing a thorough enough job at hiring and that's all you're getting, you can't close your mind and say, oh, that must mean all tinters that are available are drug addicts. That's ridiculous. So you just have to know that's because you're attracting the bottom of the barrel. Think of it as if you were terrible at marketing and you barely got any phone calls, but the ones you did were people that were price shopping. You can't assume that the whole market is those price shoppers. You're just getting the people who were so insistent on getting a low price that they called the people that are in the sixth page of Google and all the way down the list and they're calling everybody. So don't dis don't make your impression of you know hiring based on a couple bad experiences because all you're doing is making it you know making it tough for yourself. You're the one without a tinter if you don't do a thorough enough job hiring. You're just slowing down your progress and you owe it to yourself not to do that. So next thing was getting into graphics or deco. So Getting into dra graphics or deco, you know, it, there's a couple ways to s slice this apple. Let's see. He said, those guys aren't even available to work on the West Coast. Uh, Bob, expand on that. What do you mean? Uh, Bob said, those guys aren't available to work on the West Coast. Uh, which guys? The drug addicts? Are you saying there's not even like anybody like that available to work on the West Coast is how I'm taking that. But um, fill in the blanks for me. So... Getting into graphics or deco, you know, there's a lot of ways to slice this apple. You know, you can start off kind of the easiest way is start marketing it, get it on your website, um, go out there, do the consultation, and then you can find just about any company to produce the materials for you and possibly even install it. So there's a lot of companies that'll sub out, you can sub out the work to and get that done. There's also wholesale providers that will, you know, print it and then you can install it. It's fairly simple for the most part. I mean, certainly there can be very finicky installs, but some of the larger window graphics, you know, or wall graphics, you can pick up if you're a good window film installer, you'll pick them up quickly. But that is something right off the bat to get into it, what you do is just sub out the work. That's going to enable you to get some momentum with it, build up some consistent business, and then from there you can look to bring that work in-house and train train yourself, train your staff, and you know maybe just hire a dedicated graphics production person, designer, an installer, whatever that looks like and you want to do. But the point being is you know you don't want to look at it as you know, you have to go all in at once and purchase the, the printers and the laminator and the plotters because realistically, if you're just getting into graphics, you probably don't even know what you need. And, you know, guessing with an investment that large is definitely not the way. And learning under pressure, there's no point of that. So a very easy way to get into it is just subbing out the work and, you know, little by little taking on more parts of that work. So, you know, first I would get the get the your offerings get some paperwork on it you know make some flyers for it so you can give it to customers you're going to now you're at a commercial job you tell you know maybe you're doing frost in in an office you can tell them hey would you like to do you know printed graphic wall or whatnot and so you have to have that material to hand them at your current customers so that's a way to convert your current customers into new leads for graphics so that's a that's a marketing you know um, a marketing tactic that's not going to cost you any more than what you're doing right now. So um, so definitely start with having marketing material to hand your current customers. Make sure you add these offerings to your website, to your Yelp description, to your Google description, on your Facebook, and that's gonna start to get the word out about it, You know, especially if you have it on your website. Your website will start coming up for graphic-related searches in your area once you have that content. And you know, from there, you can sub out the rest of the work. You can have it produced, you can have it installed, and then, you know, as you become more comfortable, you might do the installations yourself, okay? And then the next step from there might be investing in the materials or in the uh, production equipment and bringing that all in-house and doing the entire process from start to finish. So I hope you can see that's an easy way to kind of get going in graphics without, a, you know, any, really any commitment because you can start by converting your existing clients. And the key here, the trap not to fall into is don't get caught up on your profit margins when you're starting off, okay? Just be focused on learning and be focused on getting consistent business and getting your name out there because you can always increase your profit margins once you have that business by outsourcing less, bringing more of it in-house, and then, you know, um, 
increasing prices, chopping down your costs. And, you know, once you're going, you can adjust your profit margins. Don't let your profit margins, you know, steer you in the wrong direction from the start because that is the mistake I think a lot of people make. Um, safety and film, uh, safety film in schools was the fourth topic that was brought up. So, you know, I don't obviously agree or disagree with safety film in schools. I mean, I, I promote it. I hope every school has safety film installed on it, or at least the equivalent strength of glass just for the protection, you know, these days. But the topic here is, you know, what was brought up was if anybody had any questions in going after schools for safety films. And what I wanted to point out with this topic is, you know, this is one of those you really have to question if this model, if this type of job fits your business. Okay, and what I mean by that is when you go in for a job like safety films for schools, you're probably going to be required to make multiple visits to them, a lot of follow-ups to them. The profit margins may not be on the higher side because they're going to get multiple bids and, you know, price is going to be a factor most likely. So these are not necessarily jobs for anybody. If you find yourself kind of admin weak, if you're you know, if, if admin isn't your strength, if, if, if following up with customers isn't your strength, then investing into schools, investing your time into like schools for safety film may not be the best return for your time. Okay. So you don't try to do all things. You really have to break down your strengths and you know, the services you're offering now, what makes you the most money, what keeps, what takes the least amount of time, where do you see the opportunity growth for growth? And Truly, what do you enjoy the most? Because where you enjoy is also where, you know, things are going to grow naturally. And of course, you're going to enjoy it. And that's a huge part of business and a huge part of life. So I would just say safety films in schools, don't get FOMO. Don't think that if you're not doing that, you need to just invest some time into it. Evaluate if that's the right move for you. Uh, before going in and maybe getting into something that, you know, I'll give you an, another example. If if they if the school limits the hours that you're going to be installing into the, you know, certain parts of the day, is that going to be something you're okay with? Do you have a crew that can get a large amount of square foot done in a short amount of time? You know, or are you already busy and just looking to grow more? Because if you're already busy, ready to grow more, you want to kind of grow in the ways that make sense for your business structure that you have now and the one that you want to grow into. So just look at it that way and decide if it's right for you or not right for you. If you have the manpower if, or, you know, woman power, if you have the time, then focusing on schools, if you can make that a specialty, then once you figure out the first few schools, you're going to be an expert in those schools. And then a lot of those skills are going to translate into different industries. So, you know, by all means, am I not trying to push anybody away from those types of projects? I'm just saying, you know, if you're going to go in there, you need to go all in because it's not it's not the type of project you can have one foot in, one foot out in. You need to go all in, but of course, if you do, it's it can be very, very, very worth it. And the fifth topic, fifth and final topic, is whether you should have pricing on your website or not. And I kind of touched on this one a little earlier in the Tint Wisdom. And the idea here is if you're getting a lot of inquiries and you're super booked out, then it's a great idea to play with a couple things. One of those can be if you, you know, if really what you want to do is you want to first just increase your prices, because if you increase your prices and do everything else the same, you can, you know, kind of, you can obviously make more money with the same amount of work and you might, you might end up with less of a backlog of, you know, you may have a four week wait now or a three week wait, wait now. You might end up with a two week wait, but at least you imagine this, the customers you're getting to are, you're getting to them in two weeks instead of three weeks, which is another benefit for them. They're going to be a little happier that you can get them in sooner, even if they have to pay a little more. And that's a trade off that customers make. And there's nothing wrong with that. So if there's a market, if there's a demand for you that's so high that people are waiting a lot of a, a long time you may want to consider instead of making everybody wait four or five weeks raise your prices and allow those that want to pay a premium you know they want to pay uh, even more than you're charging now to be able to get that done in you know a less amount of time basically so raise your prices raise your prices and throttle your business that way now if you are in a situation where you don't want to expand your admin sides of things. Your time is so valuable tinting. You don't want to you don't want to expand the business and you don't want to deal with responding to inquiries at all. Then 
you know, those are, I mean, that's a great situation to be in. Then what you can do is add your pricing to your website, add, you know, let people schedule themselves, whatever you want to do. And then in that case, you can completely eliminate that. And as long as you're, you know, in demand and you're staying as busy as you'd like and commanding the price you'd like, then you're in good shape. But I think that's a very, very, very small minority of the tin shops out there. And don't get tricked into putting prices on there because you're lazy and what you're calling automation is really laziness and what you're really losing is the chance to sell the majority of your customers because you know like i said there's places to be efficient there's places to automate and there's places that are attractive to try and do that but it's a trap and you're actually going to hurt your business more than you're going to help your business so that's it those are the five topics and uh and we're going to be back this Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. It's the same times and mostly the same days every week. So this Thursday, we're going to be back with John Little. So it's going to be an interview style Thursday. Um, I will schedule that one. You can drop questions in these comments. Um, if you have questions for Thursday's podcast or you have questions from today's, drop them in the comments, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this on YouTube. All the videos do go on YouTube after, which is a great way to catch up on previous ones. It also allows you to listen to it without watching. Um, you can also do that through iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Shopify. So, you know, if you're watching this live, you're not watching this live, I appreciate you. And anywhere you leave a comment or a question, we're going to get back to you. Um, before I let everyone go for the evening, you know, uh, we, we have, I brought up a, a, like last week, I think last Tuesday, I brought up the lead forms, which is one of my favorite features on TintWiz. And what lead forms allow you to do is they go on your website, they replace your existing contact form. And not only do they spite fan or not only do they fight spam from coming in, but those leads come directly from your website, directly into TintWiz. So you're notified through an app notification and an email instantly. You're right then and there calling or emailing them back, no delay. So you're getting the first touch with the customer as quick as possible. So you're making sure, you know, you're even saving them from calling another shop. And then from there, you're able to, you know, leave notes and either schedule the customer or, you know, have them, to have that customer's information in a central place for you to refer back to and do follow-ups. So lead forms are a super awesome feature. If you haven't integrated them yet, um, I mentioned last week, we can do this for you. We've done, I think, over maybe 50 or 60 lead form integrations this week, and we have a same-day turnaround. So if you need that done, what you want to do is get into the support area on TintWiz. Just, you know, in the app, just go to the menu, go to support, click on live chat, and just say, you know, hey, I'd love to, I'd love to get your help installing the lead forms on our website. And what we're going to do is we're going to instruct you step-by-step -step on how to do it. Or if you want us to just handle it for you, we can do that as well. There's absolutely no charge to this. It's something that I think is one of the just, it's just a huge time saver because once you do this, you're just never looking in your email again. You're never having to check email for leads. You're never losing customers' information. You're not having to copy and paste, retype and all that. So you're saving minutes of the day every freaking single day and it's really awesome so um check it out if you need it done for you please don't hesitate seven days a week in the support live chat we're in there almost 24 hours a day we do support more than just the u.s working hours we have users in australia in the uk in brazil in canada and mexico so we do have almost around the clock live chat support so even if you're working at night even if it's super in the morning or you're on a job don't hesitate get in the live chat and let us answer any questions you have you know and uh that's it chris queen said eric your new app looks extra sexy thank you chris queen so something super sexy is going to be announced for tint Wiz next week um, look for the announcement in the Window Film Magazine newsletter. And then, of course, we'll be mentioning it on Tint Wisdom next week and obviously on our Facebook page. But it's something that's been in the work for months. It's something that I can very much say is going to have a huge impact in this industry because basically there's no good solution for it now. There's a couple... There's a couple very, uh, I think, methods, kind of weak methods that are out there, but there's no solution for this like we've built and like will be released next week. So I'm extremely excited for that, and it's going to be a game changer, absolutely guaranteed. So thank you all for watching. Um, 
Before I let you go, one more thing I want to mention. So on YouTube, Patrick Boye is doing a series on him documenting him starting a mobile window tinting business. This is going to start as a part-time business for him, and he is documenting every single step of the way. This is week, I think, six or seven he's, weeks he's you know into starting that business. So he's going to be going live in about an hour and 25 minutes. So make sure you watch that. Um, if you catch it live or you watch it after, it's on his channel and um, you can find that on YouTube and also inside the Window Tinting Business Facebook group, which is one of many amazing Facebook groups you should be a part of. And then the other thing, today is Tinter Tuesday. Jason, our guest from maybe two weeks ago, will be going live Tinter Tuesday on his Instagram channel. It's tintdudo 3 I believe. So... If you get a chance, he'll be going live, same time as Patrick, dueling tent shows, one's on Instagram, one's on YouTube. They're both worthy of watching, so try to catch them both, whether you watch them simultaneously or you watch one live, catch one live after, catch one after, um, it is worth watching. Um, Michelle said the best notifications are approved proposals. Those are the best notifications. New lead is also a great notification, but she's right. Approved proposals, a great notification. So when you have an, a proposal, you know, a customer approves a proposal, they can do that through text message or email. You know, you get an email and a app notification. Any users of the app for your company, that's an admin is going to get that notification that the appro a proposal was approved. You're going to see which solution the customer chose to go with, and you're going to see any notes the customer left, such as when they would like to be scheduled or just anything out there that you need to know. And that enables you to, within a couple clicks, go ahead and call them, email them, or text message, schedule that installation right then and there. Now, Again, a, a, an intangible benefit of doing that so quickly, you may think, well, I do that once a day, I do that at the end of the day, this, is, this and that. Well, here's the difference. If you contact your customer within minutes of them approving the proposal, number one, you're indicating to them how on top of things you are. And when they contact you, you're getting back to them and how important they are. But the other thing is you're increasing the chances of you getting in touch with the customer because they just approved your proposal. Right now, window tint's on their mind and you're on their mind. So what a perfect time to contact them than right now. Now, if you wait an hour, you wait two hours, you wait three hours, whatever it is, you call them the next day, they've probably moved on to something else while they were waiting for you to get in touch with them. And you may contact them at an inconvenient time. Now, when I'm contacted at inconvenient times, I know sometimes I find myself a little frustrated. Do you want to put a frustrated taste in your customer's mouth for no reason when you could be on top of it? You can avoid that. I'll call you back. You can avoid that. Well, I tried to call the customer to schedule and you know, I, got, I left them a voicemail. Now you're waiting on their call back. How many phone calls and text messages do you want it to take to schedule your customer? Well, the way to minimize that is by using digital proposals, allowing customers to approve their proposals and uh, th through text or email. So that means they don't have to call you necessarily. And then al that allows you to get in touch with them immediately, get that scheduled when it's on their mind. And that's the way to do it. So that's it. Thanks everybody for joining, watching, listening to Tint Wisdom number 45. We'll be back this Thursday, same place, streaming live from our Facebook page, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Thank you all. See you then. Have a great night.